surprised and really hard to, to receive it. So I, I'm going to be honest. This, this was going to be hot this morning, but I followed yesterday just to make sure I had it this morning. In case I did something silly, which I did, I forgot my phone. I had to turn back around so they're not hot, so don't get excited. But, so when you buy it, when you get French fries in your happy meal or whatever, have you ever had anybody to grab one from you like,
Dios, pero iglesia de Dios, dos veces de Dios. Friend of mine, Kevin Lowe. He's probably not the way to do today. He uh, got two young boys. Where's he at? He's in the Baptist. He's uh, it's new. It's come from uh, when he had COVID. Messed his lungs up. It's bad. It's been a lot. And Gary Harris, uh, Gary uh, does the desserts for Roberts, the new place out here in several places in Nashville. And he was mowing this week and he backed out in front of a car. The car hit him and um, they didn't think he was hurt too bad, but uh, it broke his head, his collarbone, and then uh, he punctured uh, two ribs, punctured his lung. He's on a ventilator now, and they don't think he's going to make it. God will mercy for those traveling. And I have a praise, just for some special family time and celebrating accomplishments. I have a praise. Any 
the others? Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we feel your presence. We feel your love every day. Even when we're not searching for it, but through times that, that we look back and we know that you've done things for us without us even knowing the times that you've just always been there and diverted things or made things different in our everyday lives. And God, we appreciate and love you and worship you and honor you and glorify your name for all great and wonderful things that you do. God, we lift up all of these this morning, that these who are injured, these who have passed, families who mourn, we want you, God, to be just so much a part of of, of their healing and so much a part of their their comfort. Let everyone affected by tragedy, by injury, or by sickness, let them all feel your presence now, God. Through the Holy Spirit, fill their rooms and fill their hearts. Help them, God. We as a church pray for them together. We have them in our hearts. And we pray that, that all things, all things will work in their favor through you. And that they will reach for you. And they will understand that they can reach for you. We ask for miracles. We ask for healing. We ask attention to unspoken prayers. And our hearts glorify you for all the praises. All the wonderful things that you do. Help us to realize that we're sinners. That we're all the same. And that we need you desperately every day. Help us to understand the, your grace in a new way this week. Help us to see you in a new light. And understand the great and wonderful God you really are. And to not take you for granted, not take your love for granted, <coughs> always be visible. We give you thanksgiving for great and wonderful blessings, great and wonderful gifts. And we ask you to help us understand that we need to share those gifts back with the world. Things given to us are to be distributed. All things. We give you praise, honor, and glory this morning. And acknowledge you as the one true living God. And we do these things as Jesus has taught us by saying, Our Father, you are in heaven. Now will be the name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We'll continue worshiping through the giving of our tithes.
gracious and heavenly Father, we ask that you take these gifts and use them to glorify your name. <coughs> So many times the words of Ecclesiastes are referred to as the words of the preacher. The title preacher is the rendering of the Hebrew word, I'm trying it, it's odd, kofile, kofile, and that is derived from the word korfil. In English that is to gather. The word corphalet appears seven times in Ecclesiastes, but nowhere else in the Bible. The preacher begins Ecclesiastes 9 with the claim that we are not in control of our lives. Anything awaits us. It could be good, it could be bad. No matter who we are, no matter our age, race, gender, identity, finances, job, or talents, we do not know what tomorrow brings. However, we try so hard to be in control of that. We make plans and hopes to have some sort of grounding on tomorrow and the future. But all we can do is expect because anything can happen. The University of California held a study with mice. They had a hypothesis that mice were anxious, anxious creatures. And that when they are placed in an open space, they do whatever they can to escape it. You don't usually see a mouse or a rat hanging out in the open. Mice love to be in the dark, in closed spaces, because that removes any variables of possible death. When I first read that story, I thought, that was kind of interesting because I realized that that story related to us too. We're surrounded. We're someone who wants to re remove every possible variable that can be negative towards us. I want to be in control of the situation because at least then 
I feel I have an idea of what's going to happen. There are areas in our lives that we want to be in control of. Our finances, our job, our family, even in our church where we go. Whatever it is, we all worry about circumstances and try our best to fight them. We don't need to worry. In fact, God uses Ecclesiastes and wisdom of the preacher to teach us how to say no. When we worry, our minds are never in the right place. We are never present because we're always focused on something something hypothetical that hasn't happened and probably won't. When you worry, your mind is not on the people or the place in the in front of you. Now listen to that. Listen to that. When you worry, your mind is not on the people or the places in front of you. It's on something that's not real and probably not even possible. God frees us to say no to worry and control so it can heal us to be present now. To not worry about the future but to see the beauty of God as given today Jesus Christ himself reminds us of Matthew 6.25 which says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? God is going to take care of you. Listen, God is going to take care of you because God takes care of His children, <coughs> His beloved. He has taken care of us in the past, in Scripture, and throughout <coughs> history, and will take care of us today. Think about it. Has God ever failed you? It may not have been what you expected it to be when, the, when it turned out. It may not be what you thought it should be. It may not be what you had hoped for. But He never once ever in that, possible, in that problem ever abandoned you. He took care of you. And you turned out fine. In fact, in a lot of cases in which I've tried to orchestrate God's response, <coughs> on the other side of that problem, that situation, or that prayer, I've always been able to look back and see that God did so much better than I could have. Because He not only knew what I needed, but what He needed. Saying no to anger heals us in relationships. God says no to anger because He heals us for relationships. When the anger of the ruler rises against you, do not leave your place <coughs> for calmness will lay great offense to rest. James 1, 2 through 4 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. The Hebrew word, marpe, <coughs> which translates to calmness. Let me go back a little bit. The Hebrew word for marpe, which translates to calmness, and can also be used for gentleness, composure, soothing, and pacifying. Marpe is derived from the root word rapa, which means to heal. This word from the preacher is not about saving face. <coughs> we do that lot, don't we? It's not about saving face or looking more mature. It's about healing. Even when the person that has gone against us, this is the important part of this, even when the person has gone against us is a fool and immature. 
How many people do we know like that in our lives? Even when we rightfully so could condemn them. The preacher says remain calm. Endure. Because the goal is not our pride or vindication. It's our healing. Let's be clear though. If you're in a situation which is abusive or dangerous, you've got to get out. Sometimes all we can do is remove ourselves from these situations and hope healing comes in the future from God. However, if in other situations that are not abusive or dangerous to us, we are called to endure, hard to say, we are called to endure and to love those who are against us. I'm not a Captain America guy. But I did read that in Captain America Civil War, the bad guy of the movie, and maybe you guys saw this, the bad guy of the movie is someone who is diabolical or a person who wants to watch the world burn. He is a husband, son, and father who lost his family in a tragedy. He let his bitterness and anger Consume him. And that led him to try to end all heroes. Near the end of the movie, as Iron Man and Captain America are fighting against one another, the Black Panther shows up. He sought out a man for killing his dad, listens to his reasons, after pausing and lowering his weapon, says, vengeance has consumed you that has consumed them. And I am done letting it consume me. Anger, bitterness, pride, and rage only divides us. This separates us from the enemies that tells us we can only be with people who are like us and treat us nicely. Unfortunately, this worldly view infuriated the church, infiltrated the church a long time ago, and we know this to be true. And it's become ingrained in our culture that it's even more divided today than it's ever been. Those who believe differently are ousted. Those who act differently are excluded. Those who upset our routine, those who have different voice, those who anger, those who cause us frustration because of their foolishness. We remove them and burn the bridges of the relationship. The church is called to be a mosaic of people who confess Jesus as their Lord. We are called to live a certain way that counters the world. That's hard. We are called to live a certain way that counters the world and we are discerning and diligent in how we act, only as a response to being saved. Yet somehow this has gotten lost in our anger and frustration. It's chaotic, it's confusing, and it's muddy. God calls us to endure. God calls us to be present among people who are foolish and arrogant because God has been present with us when we have been foolish and error. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The key word is all. You and me, we fell short. But through God's love, God said no to bitterness. Despite our sin, despite our rebellion, despite our flawed views and choices, he endured and loved us and says no to his anger. That we might be healed for relationship. When we say no to anger, we recognize that we are free and healed and can grow in relationships with each other. <clears throat> that there is more of a chance for healing 
than there would be if we gave in to it. We recognize our real enemy is sin and how it has encased others who is living foolishly in it. When we say no, when we say no to anger, we live in God's grace where we can think of our enemies as our friends. Saying no to the world heals us from God. Both anger and worry are the key players in today's world. The world wants us to be separated, to be on our own. But God says no to this. When the world was dark, chaotic, and void, God said no. When he said, let there be light. When the world was stuck in sin and God said no, because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God says no to the world and gives us the same authority that we may be healed with God. Ecclesiastes 12, 12 through 14 says, My son, beware of anything beyond these, of making many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. At the end of the day, we are left with one option. To say yes to God, or yes to the world. And in turn, we say no to the other. When you say yes to God, you are saying no to anger and worry, and yes to relationships and presence with God. What could be better than a relationship and presence with the Creator who loves us and saves us from bitterness and wrath, from fear and control? How many of us thank God at all on a daily basis? We may thank God when we're here together at church or during the day, but is it daily? Do we thank God daily? Is it at work? Is it at school? The world is a challenging place that we need to take seriously. Distractions come in all shapes and sizes that are not all bad, but they can keep us from thinking about God. Sometimes they pile up, and before you know it, our concern for ourselves have taken the place of God. We find time to think of God, to be with Him, no matter what the world offers God, must come first. God is telling us it is not about what we know or read. It is not about how we engage. It is not about, it's about seeking Him first. Do we do the things we do because it lines up with who God is? Is it because God is walking with us in it? Or is it because it is the latest, I'm sorry, the latest trend? When we say no to the world, we are not following the trends of the world. And wisdom it offers. But we are following God. I found this to be true this week. So many things to think about. So many things to accomplish. Yet my daily time with God had suffered. And as I wrote this sermon, my consciousness of that matter was sadly exposed. And my failure to seek Him was evident. I felt defeated. I felt condemned. But God knew the world was on my shoulders. And that it was greatly distracting to me. In his goodness, love, and patience, 
He continued to love me and my family and waited for me to come back to where I knew I belonged. Ecclesiastes is a book that clears out everything the world tells us about religion. It bathes and cleanses us from false ideas about religion, wisdom, and faith. It frees us to look at the buildings and the institutions, but more about God. It's the remind, it's the reminder that we are denying ourselves, taking up crosses, and following Jesus to the very end. No matter the wisdom, no matter the knowledge, the worry, the fear, whatever it is, God calls us to remember Him. God always comes first. He has healed us from our worry and our anger. <coughs> he has healed us from our sin. God has said no to the world by saving the world and loving it. And we need to be saved. It's very easy to get mixed up in our worldly affairs daily. They will never stop on this side of heaven. We will daily have something to, to de determine something, to configure something, to hold us back. It calls us to go different ways from what our ideas are. We will forever be given hurdles. We cannot jump. Hurdles, we can't clear. But God has never found a hurdle we couldn't clear. God has never found a time in your life when He couldn't help. God has never been too busy for you. God will never be too busy for you. He has a whole universe, yet He has time for you. We need to stay focused on our God. And while there are times in our lives that take away from that focus, we need to remind ourselves daily to take a minute. Just a minute. Connect with Him. Disconnect from our world. And find He is still there after all this time waiting to love you once again. Let us pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, as we go through things in our lives, as we deal with our world, Every day this week and every day for the rest of our lives remind us that even though we get caught up in anger or worry, emotions, our world will always be there. Dish it out to us. Remind us on a daily basis that you're there to help us, to relieve us, to comfort us, and most of all, just to love us. And with that, we give you all the praise. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In the garden.